So um, as we know, I want to say that uh, this year World Angel Day was going to be going to be marked particularly in Pakistan, uh, in Karachi, and in Islamabad. So, and one of uh, active World Angel Day supporters and also a uh, goodwill ambassador of this international day. His name is Mr. Zafar Iqbal. Uh, knew about this coming interview. So he, he wanted to ask some questions, you know, and on behalf of him, I'm going to address those questions to you. So he wanted to, basically he said, so I heard that uh, blockchain technologies may be the solution to the current problems to face uh, problems faced by NGOs worldwide. Do you think that blockchain technologies can help Pakistani NGOs thrive internationally and tackle greatest challenges? They, as a country, and also the uh, NGO sector in Pakistan, they are very interested of innovation and technology technologies and development and how to use those solutions and tools within non-profit NGO sector and provide better service for their society. So yeah, what's your opinion? Uh, thank you. Blockchain. Um, let me be honest and say I'm not very knowledgeable in that field. Sure. But any, I reckon any good new tool is surely a help. Right, exactly. And, but it always, one should always look at new things, what is the upside and what is the downside. Right. Like, you know, some uh, years back, everybody was talking out about the cloud, the cloud, the cloud. But have we looked at the energy it takes to run them? I say so, what you mean. You know, th there's the environment also. So therefore, th we need to have a balanced approach of uh, th that uh, the resource needs, both on energy and, and other resources, is commensurate with the result. Right. Or, 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 or with the gain that we expect from it, that there isn't a new imbalance created and down the line, you know, limited access some places. The, again, the rural areas not included or whatever the, you know, these fallouts are, which are so, uh, this ugly word, you know, collateral. Mm. The mm -hmm. collateral losses, you know. I think we, we are we have grown, we have learned enough to get into a new field by going around the question properly. Right. I so see. I, I've I sort of elaborated a bit a lot on that, but basically again I say any good new tool is, is awfully helpful. Uh, and the communications are helpful. Right. Can, can I can I tack on another point which sure. we lo which we are facing in Europe now? Go ahead. Yeah. On on international on inter uh, net technology, mm -hmm. we are just at the point of needing to look into artificial intelligence regulations. Right. This is an enormously big new field. And I'm not an expert on it, and I, I began to participate and learn what it is involved. And one can even get easily get tracked, trapped into talking technology. Right, yeah. The issue is that basically IT business worldwide is only taking its part you know, thinking of it as an asset, mm -hmm. but it is not the end of the story. Okay. A, because artificial intelligence by itself does not stop at state frontiers. Therefore, state laws on their own, on their own will always fall short. So we need a multilateral approach 
to avoid corporate capture, both of the state and the civic space okay. via artificial intelligence. This, this is a bit a, a zigzag explanation, <laughs> but I hope to keep it short sure, yeah. and understandable. And that is currently an issue we just, we now have to address. That in this new field, also people need to be respected. The judiciary needs to have its chance to put the guidelines, you know, the, 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 to, to uh, guard ourselves from excesses. Mm -hmm. There have been really rough examples. Right. The, the, the Netherlands Ministry of Social Affairs used AI, and it was faulty. And the results were really dramatic, dramatic. People needing, families needing support suddenly lost it. They were even suicides. They were families pulled apart, you know, children being put into care homes away wow. from parents, all based because IA was unchecked. Wow. Luckily, luckily, the judiciary in Netherlands worked. There were very severe rulings from the courts and the Ministry of Social Affairs was very quick on repairing the damage in as far as it could be and repairing the system. But that is one bad wow. example of what happens if we don't have the regulation. Sure, I understand. So I've just shared with you one of the urgencies we are facing. Mm -hmm. And we are lucky that, that among our membership, there are people who are well-versed who can really keep the conversation with the specialists right. so that these safeguards are in and that we don't forget the human being. Right, I see. So, I'm yeah, grateful I agree. for you giving me the time to explain this important so, current affairs detail here. It is important. And like you said, um, there is needs for the collaboration between uh, different sectors so to understand so that each of them can understand better the potential and also find solutions uh, when it comes to the energy requirements or like uh, resources or be you know like more green and uh, sustainable for, for for the earth or for the world you know so and also like um, it's it's also to be more transparent to explain that's why i like kind of blockchain because they are decentralized from one hand because it's not really centralized by governments or corporations or like you know but they are decentralized and they are they their principles to, are to be transparent because uh when you dig to the codes or where it comes from you can find a lot of lots of things you know so in, in, there's that transparency you know so uh when for example we talk about uh institutions like traditional institutions like banks uh it's where they are regulated they are centralized but at the same time the the funds the finance is very it's for society they they're not going to share that information really you know until something happens really bad you know and that that goes you know outside to the society and there have been so many examples from hsbc bank you know to barclays or uh, other international banks you know that been involved in um including deutsche bank exactly that been in, in, involved in very interesting uh, questionable activities and 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 then you know society finds out what's what's happening what's going on but until then it's been like kind of hide it and there's not a transparency you know so that's right. why from one hand i like the blockchain that kind of try to provide that uh, that that uh, direction 
uh, when it comes to IA, artificial intelligence, yeah, I understand what you mean. And it is actually very scary that, you know, that kind of things are already happened and could happen, you know, in any society or any country, uh, especially if you don't regulate or don't understand how this tool, uh, like technology works or like uh, could be hacked as well, you know, by hackers and uh, make big mess you know that is scary case but i think it's important to like exactly learn and um and have those uh, fruitful um like discussions expert discussions bring uh, cross board different people you know and find out you know how we can sort solutions rather than you know um like uh, hire like companies that you know that feel that they are important you know and avoid or disclose uh, like specialists from the you know from the from the important uh, decision making important decisions right well the other question that the mr zafar iqbal uh, wanted to ask you basically he wants wanted to understand how pakistani ngos can contribute towards uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals that we know as uh, SDGs. For Pakistan, it's very important uh, to support SDGs, and not just for Pakistan, also from the rest of the world. And as we know, that every single NGO is contributing something towards SDGs. But I understand he wanted to under, uh, understand better what would be those tools or like maybe your kind of experience working with uh, other NGOs or being connected with other, other NGOs? What, what are those tools that they can use, you know, to contribute towards SDGs? Thank you. That's interesting. I would say um, there are, you know, what is it, 17? Yeah, there is numbers. <laughs> Seven. 17 goals. So th there's a lot of them. So what we have done, at, uh, I should quickly say, the Council of Europe has a little institution which is like the platform to for exchanges and dialogues with its southern neighbours. Okay. And the southern neighbours basically is the the, the the states that are, are around the Mediterranean Sea. Mm -hmm. so, the, so with other words, this issue have come up there. And uh, I was involved in these uh, conversations and, and conferences. And what we have tried to do, we have looked at the 17 and selected those where we from... The I, from the NGO sector have a particular role or even a particular re responsibility to take care that the conversation is balanced and complete. Mm, I see. So, right. so that, that would be the first thing to do, to mm -hmm. take the 17 and say, <clears throat> we from our side we prioritize on A, B, C, D. Right. Maybe stop with four and not go further. Otherwise, yeah. you know, you may lose. Uh, exactly. You cannot bring energy to too many of them. Right, yeah. That was, that was one thing we did. And it, uh, I think it, it proved a very successful approach. And we, we had a very good workshop and even the diplomats and the uh, government officials stayed for the workshop. They didn't leave the room. <laughs> That's very important. I think, like you said, it's, it's important uh, to be focused and pick up those few SDGs and that is related to their work and work on that and, and, and then right. like assess and see how important, like what, what are those achievements uh, working on those specific SDGs? 
And I agree with you, you can't take all, all 17 SDGs and dig, like jump on them and start to work, you know, because it's, it's very complex and very, it, each SDG has a very important role uh, that they, you know, that they serve. And um, I, I, I think that what's important is to, one of the important thing is to educate uh, civil society, especially if you talk about Pakistan or other uh, countries that uh, are learning about SDGs. It's very important to educate them, to let them know better what the, is the SDG, not just the boards uh, that is uh, described in the, within the frame of goal, but what right. what is the like actions we can take? What what right. kind of consequences of that SDG? What that kind of results we can predict? You know, and maybe that would help uh, them to tailor their programs or their um, like initiatives uh, much better. So right. I, I agree with you. I want to ask you, Council of Europe, International Conference of NGOs. So is this? institution has also relationship with Pakistan because obviously I know that within Europe you know that's I know how many members and what are those members um, like that are part of Council of Europe but what is the relationship or is there any relationship with Pakistan uh, right now between this intergovernmental organization and that country uh, thanks for the question. I would have to look it up. Right. Whether whether the state of Pakistan has ratified or signed mm -hmm. a, a convention or a charter uh, regarding because th th those conventions with charter are open to non-member states. I see. For signature or and even ratification, if the, if that's the system how the these states work. So, with other words, a sort of the the, the homework is not uh, protected. Right. You, know, yeah. you, you can you can benefit from you know valuable texts being prepared on right. a certain topic. I see that relates to either human rights, rule of law, or democratic governance. I see, and yeah, I would like to add that um, council of. Uh, of Europe Conference of INGOs is very important, like a tool or platform for also um, to learn from, you know, and 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 find out like recent activities or information to those organizations that are based in Pakistan or Syria or ad any other countries that are right. not really part of the family of uh, Council of Europe because they for them it's important to have that engagement or have that you know link you know that there is that information you know that uh some different information that we they can take in you know and learn so much and and educate themselves and and, and come up with something great amazing as we know all that there are numbers of uh international non-profit and ngo organizations that are um operates in pakistan and they are uh, some of those headquarters are based in Europe, so they have those branches in Pakistan or any other uh, countries. And there's, I feel, those links. You know, some of them, some some of those actually um, international NGOs are members of uh, conference of NGO of Council of Europe, and there is that kind of synergy or relationship. You know, when mm. we look to ISEX or any other like international organization. So yeah. It was my pleasure to speak to you. And yes, sorry, yeah, go ahead. If you want to, I could just uh, bring up one specific so tool to, which would be of interest precisely on what you have just said. Of course. Uh, uh, I'm opening up the, a slide here um, and go to point one. Uh, good code of good practice on civil participation in the decision-making process. It's a slightly long sentence. Mm -hmm. So among ourselves, we just talk of the code of good practice. Right. And 
Let me just briefly say, we have developed this 10 years ago, and uh, it has proved to be a very interesting tool for civil society to engage on the local level with authorities, to bring forward the points and to make social cohesion more real I see. at the local level. So back in it, at the Council of Europe, the second edition of this code has now been jointly worked on with the Congress of Local Authorities, including implementation instruments. I see. And the next step we are envis envisaging that such instruments of, of how to operate in a given legal framework with every party having their contribution and I their see. say and their recognition. This has been a very interesting experience. Uh, and uh, going back to the QR code about mm -hmm. the Conference sure, of yeah. International NGOs, there, via that uh, website, one can access the code and download it. And maybe some NGOs who, who feel like wanting to better cooperate with the local government on, be it uh, water resource or whatever the issues are that need addressing, maybe that is a way of engaging. I think that's amazing advice, and I think uh, it's very, going to be very helpful to so many non-profit and NGO organizations that are based in Pakistan and also in other countries like Syria or Jordania or any you know uh, countries that we can imagine that would be interested to like learn more and be uh, like self-developed and sustained. So uh, that's the code. Here again, can... here again is the QR code. Exactly. That's a code and you can like take your phone or like iPad and scan the code. And there is also, and there's a codes link uh, website where you, you can type on your uh, like PC or MacBook and find the information. So um, it was really, really a um, pleasure uh, to talk to you and heard so many important points and uh, like your experience as well. We covered today so many different stuff from um, getting involved in NGO sector, your personal experience uh, to like angry people, you know, and uh, that uh, against NGO sector. And within that, we also explored so many important roles and things that uh, how uh, Council of Europe and NGO conference contributes to help NGO sector and Europe uh, to sustain and be sustainable. And that's very important work that you and your colleagues are doing and helping. And I want to say a huge thank you. And I'm very delighted as well that we're going to celebrate World NGO Davis Council of Europe anytime soon. So uh, again, thank you very much, uh, Christoph. It was my pleasure to talk to you today. And I hope Pakistani NGOs enjoyed this interview and have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much, Matsis, for the invitation and best wishes to all organizers and participants. Bye-bye. Bye.